More than 200 employees of St. Luke's Behavioral Hospital in Phoenix were furloughed yesterday due to ongoing problems with the facility. Problems that led the State Department of Health to suspend the hospital's medical license earlier this month. Stephanie Innes of the Arizona Republic has been covering this story and she joins us now. Stephanie, good to have you here. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, this is a psychiatric facility in Phoenix we're talking about, correct? Yes, 127 beds. 127 beds. Mm -hmm. More than 200 employees furloughed because? Because on August 13th, the state suspended the license at St. Luke's Behavioral Health at the hospital because the air conditioning had broken um, that weekend and the temperature in the lobby was over 80 degrees temperature in the in the intake facility and everywhere it was it was not what they considered good for patients it was putting patients at risk and so the medical license and now they're they're basically saying according to your reporting that medical license will likely be revoked well, they've put the facility on notice uh, that it could be revoked, so that the the state says they intend to revoke it, um, and they have in the meantime suspended the license. So there's a hearing on Thursday, which is actually pretty unusual because usually the state tries to work with these facilities. Really? So yeah, and so that says to me that that the owners of St. Luke's from Stewart Healthcare that maybe they're not being as agreeable or working with the state the way um, usually other facilities do when they're in these kinds of situations. I want to get to Stuart here in a second yeah. because of the other facilities around town. Yeah. But the patients, if the medical license is, is revoked and everything, they got to get out of there, where do they go? Well, they're out of there now already because the, the license has been suspended. But so the, you, okay. you bring up a very good point that, you know, there are 127 beds in a psychiatric hospital. You know, Stewart Health in Arizona has 415 beds, which when you consider the state has 15,000 hospital beds, maybe that doesn't sound like a huge number. But 127 psychiatric beds is very big, and they're very sought after and needed and they serve a, a population of people who are on Medicaid. So and it is it is very critical. It may, it's an impact, I would imagine, on health care in the Valley overall. Oh, it's a huge impact. Yeah. yeah. Now, let's get to Stewart Health here because they own St. Luke's. They filed for Chapter 11. I remember mm -hmm. this earlier this year because I'm thinking, what's going to happen to all the St. Luke? What is going to happen to all the St. Luke facilities around town and in the state, the Stewart facilities? Well, so Stewart says it's trying to sell the hospitals. And I know Attorney General Chris Mays is says she's looking into the bankruptcy case. I don't know if she's intervening at all the la I don't I haven't heard that she is yet um, but I know she's concerned about the patients and in Massachusetts it's it, well they have 31 hospitals around the country and they're trying to sell all of them um, but they haven't they don't have a buyer yet and how many hospitals in Arizona how many facilities in Arizona four hospitals and 22 clinics okay and that includes Tempe St. Luke's which I think Tempe St. Luke's years. and there's also a hospital in Florence and a hospital in Mesa. They're looking for buyers. Mm -hmm. Let's say they don't find buyers. What happens? Yeah, well, they've already closed two hospitals in Massachusetts and, you know, at least 900, probably more than that, people lost their jobs. Yeah. yeah. Well, not only lost their jobs, but you've got hospitals shuttered. You've got... Yeah. You have patients without a place to go. So, and, and as far as overall hospital beds in the Valley, mm -hmm. How big of an impact? I know behavioral health and psychiatric facilities kind of on, on a specialized mm -hmm. treatment, but just these general facilities, how much of an impact would that make? Well, I mean, it's, you know, as I said, it's 415 beds statewide that Stewart has, which if you look at the total number of hospital beds in the state, maybe doesn't look that big, but in a place like Tempe, you know, that's the main hospital, right? Right. And... And same with Florence. Yes. So it's it's an issue of location, too. Is this, you mentioned the the hearing on Thursday unusual, and it kind of shows that the state means business and they're tired of fooling around here. Mm -hmm. This entire situation of a hospital change is basically going belly up and saying, come buy our stuff or we're going to shutter the place. How unusual is that? Well, I've been covering health care in Arizona since 08, and I haven't encountered anything quite like this before. Yeah. Um, but I'm not, you know, I, I wouldn't say that that 
maybe as a definitive statement that's just anecdotal. Is it, is it an indication of the hospital business in America right now? Are we seeing, you mentioned other parts of the country, but are we seeing this with other companies around the country? Well, I mean, St. Luke's, as with many hospitals, used to be nonprofit, and then it became for-profit. And Stewart is a for-profit company, and it was at one time owned by private equity. And the Massachusetts lawmakers, um, Senator Elizabeth Warren is one of them, have really gone after Stewart, saying that, you know, when the private equity company got out of Stewart, that they took a $800 million profit. Oh, my goodness. And their CEO bought a yacht, and he was just seen at the Olympics uh, watching the dressage competition well. while... Well, all these uh, employees were, were grappling with losing their oh, jobs. Good for him. So, Leah, last, yeah. last question then. It, is this the kind of thing, and I hear Elizabeth Warren's name, and I know she, she kind of likes to take crusades and, and kind of go yeah. with certain ideas. Yeah. Is this the kind of thing that will change the nature or perhaps uh, statutes involving privately owned health care facilities, specifically hospitals? I mean, Florence can't afford to lose a hospital. That's That's... That's not good for that area. Yeah, I I don't know what is going to happen. I mean, I I think that private ownership of healthcare and for-profit ownership is certainly the trend, and I don't know that that's going to stop. But you know, I'm I also I I don't make those rules, right, so I can't right. really say. But I think that there are people concerned, and like what is happening in Massachusetts, there have been. A lot of there's been a lot of community reaction to what's going on with Stewart there, and I would imagine, depending on how it plays out here, it's probably going to be the same here. Well, I guess we're going to find out in a big way how it plays out on Thursday with that administrative hearing. Yeah, I, I'm really interested to see how that goes. All right, well, we'll be reading what you write there, okay. Stephanie. Thank Stephanie Innes, Arizona Republic, always a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.